Travis and I are hauling manure again today. We are out at my place and we are cleaning out the pole shed. So I'm just hauling out to one of these strips out here. Uh, these di this corn stalks were dissed down last week. Now we're going to come through and chisel it. So before we chisel it, we're going to spread some of the manure that was in the pole shed and in the barn out here. Touch the paint up on this while I was away. It's like brand new. anybody says anything yes I know I have to shave just haven't gotten around to it um, anyway I'm about to graduate Platteville uh, for ag business I've got about three weeks left and we're about to start looking down the barrel of planting corn I think we're gonna be looking at it this week depending on if the weather holds out or not uh, it's been about 75 degrees for the last two or three days and you know some people north of us have already started and it's well past April 15th now so we're looking to get started and hopefully it should be a quick and painless process for us.
now. They wanted me to explain why we want a nice even distribution pattern across the entire strip. And as I've said in my past videos, we farm in contours, which means that our fields are in strips. They're alternating, they're alternating crops. And the reason that you want to have a nice distribution pattern over what you're spreading is because for two reasons. Uh, the first reason being that you don't want some crops in that strip to have more nutrients than the others. So you don't want a spot of corn here that yields 180 bushels and then another spot in another spot in the same, in the same exact field that has 140 bushels yield. So that's the first reason. Then the second reason I think is because you want a nice distribution pattern for the phosphorus that's in the manure. Any kind of manominy, any kind of manure is uh, very high in phosphorus and you want to have a nice distribution pattern across the field because you don't want higher concentrations of phosphorus in some places because phosphorus is the first nutrient that runs off when you spread. Um, it's just, it doesn't bind to the soil very well and it runs off very easily. And phosphorus encourages algae growth, which happens to, algae takes oxygen out of the water, which causes fish, fish kills. Um, so you want to kind of restrict any kind of manure that runs off into the water that you can, which is why we farm in contours and why we want a nice distribution pattern. If you incorporate the manure that you spread, it's less likely to run off, which is why we incorporate the manure. Uh, you know, some farmers don't really do that, I don't think, but most do, and for a good reason. Now, I hope all of you have heard about the dead zone in the Gulf of Mexico at the outlet of the Mississippi. Now, that dead zone is caused by nutrient runoff from farms like this one. Now, these farms are only a couple miles away from the Mississippi. I can look over the hill and I can see the bluffs in Iowa from here. So it's very important that farmers all throughout the Great Plains and the Midwest manage their erosion. Um, there's a study done up in Manitoba that scientists wanted to figure out what nutrients that farmers were putting down that was causing these fish kills. Well, what they did was they took a couple different lakes and they put different nutrients into them. And what they, the three different nutrients they were trying to figure out what they knew were causing the problem, but they just wanted to narrow it down, were nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, N, P, and K. What they found was that in the lakes that they put nitrogen and potassium in, that there wasn't any algae growth or cloudiness in the water, but in the lake that they put phosphorus in, there was an algae bloom start, starting in it, and the water was very cloudy. So they, that's how they determined that phosphorus was the problem in causing fish kills in the Gulf of Mexico. And that dead zone down there has a huge impact on the fishing industry. So it's not just all about agriculture, it's about other industries as well. And it has a huge impact on the lives of people down there. So uh, we try to keep, keep back as much soil erosion as we can, uh, and it's much why we farm in contours, uh, because they, they are supposed to minimize erosion. So that's why it's very important to minimize erosion throughout the United States, not just in the Midwest. Uh, farmers should do all they can to minimize it because it's a huge problem.
another question I received on my last manure spreading video is if we have any trouble with these iron slats bending. Now we've only had instances of these bending in catastrophic failures and we haven't had one of those since we replaced the web. Uh, my grandpa actually replaced the web uh, just before he passed away and since then we have had absolutely no problems with this spreader. Um, back before we replaced them it definitely needed a replacing because they're also worn out from the dairy manure but since then we haven't had any issues with them at all. Uh, these slats are hardened so it takes very very much to bend them. We also replaced the beater and that took some of the weight off of the slats themselves. The beater was missing some of these wings on it, some of the teeth, and it only had a few left on it. And without that, without the beater in perfect condition, there's more weight on these slats because the slats are trying to push it back through the beater, but the beater isn't beating it away. And it just kind of pushes away at this and it puts a lot of undue stress on the slats. But we've replaced both of those, and since we replaced those, this spreader is like brand new. We've not had any problems with it. Everything works like a charm. So we're very, very, very happy with it. Uh, sometime in the future, I think, we'll be looking at a night, a night spreader. Uh, it's just one of those push types with the gate in the front and it just pushes the manure straight out the back and it slings it out the back rather than using a web. There's a lot more components to a web than a hydraulic push and we actually demoed that night spreader. Uh, a couple of you have asked me what happened to that spreader. Uh, we demoed it and we, we actually rented it uh, to do this exact job out here to clean out the barnyard because there's so much manure out there. So we'll be looking at one of those in the future. Right now this thing's working like a charm and I don't see us replacing it anytime real soon.